on my end, the last thing we want to talk about is grouping. Um, you know, again, I have a very small model, but if you have a very large model, you can have hundreds of tolerances and hundreds of measurements. And, and I hope you don't have hundreds of moves. But uh, we have added the ability to subgroup moves, tolerances, measures, and any features so that you can minimize the size of your tree in, in the uh, 3DCS. <clears throat> so now you'll be able to right click on any of your moves, tolerance, measures, points, or features, and you can make a group. And then you can put stuff in that group. What you can put in there is essentially features, points, tolerances, moves, or measures. So if I come over here, a real common one is if we look down here, you know, if we look down here and we have 11 measurements, I can see that I got gap, 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 flush, 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 gap, gap, flush, flush, and then this measurement here. Well, maybe, you know, to make my life easier, I want to subgroup all the gap measurements in the one bucket and all the flush measurements in another. So then you can right click on here and say organize measurement groups. And then from here, I'm gonna say, I need to add a measurement group. I'm gonna rename it. And I'm gonna say gap measurements. And then I'm going to add all of my gap measurements. See if I can do this. Add to selected group. And so now you can see these are inside this gap measurement. I'm going to go ahead and add another one. Rename it. Flush. Measures. And then I'm going to take my flush measurements. Also like, um, say a group of validation measures, if you had a- Absolutely, yeah. Un unfortunately, Brenda's probably listening to this. <laughs> I don't have any validation measures. <laughs> yeah, that came in from Brenda, of course. Yeah, <laughs> oh, exactly. So you're right. So, you know, if you have lots of validation measures and then you're done, you don't want them clogging up your measurement tree. So you can make a group called validation. And now you can see my, my um, measurement tree is greatly reduced and I can expand it when I want to just look at my gap measurements or expand it when I just want to look at my You know if it affects the way that these measurements are reported in your uh, analysis table? It, oh, that's a great question. And I don't know. Let's just run it and see. It doesn't affect the results because these measurements are all at the same right. level. It's a re, it's a reorg. Yeah, it didn't, it did, it, it did not affect it. Uh, oh, it did affect it. So now it's all my gaps and then it's all my flushes. So you could use that, say, to pull your validation measures into one group, put it at the bottom, and that'll push all your validation measures out of your main list. Correct. Well, it won't pull it out of the It'll main the list. Bottom. It'll right. be at the correct. So that is a key. That is a that is a key that is uh, leading right into what I wanted to point out anyway, because you can also group your moves. You can group, as you saw on the PowerPoint, features, points, moves, tolerances, or measures. So I'm gonna create a group in my move. And then the, what- Gary, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's real important to note that um, a particular feature can only be grouped into one group, right? Yes. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, make a group in my moves. Right click, group. 
and I don't know what to call it, but I'm just going to say group one, and I'm going to add these two top covers left and right. Oh, wait. Before I do that, sorry. Let's see if I shoot, delete. I don't have anything in the group yet. So before I do that, let's just animate through this real quick so you see the assembly process. Wheel, button, button, top cover, button, button. Okay, we all know that when it gets to the move list, it goes through this, these moves from top to bottom. You have to be very careful because if I make a group, oops, it's not what I wanted to do. If I say add a group and I add this to the group and say okay, the groups will always be up at the top. So now I didn't add any moves, but I did make this group. So when I animate this, you will see it does button, button, wheel, button, button. And then the last move, which was putting the top cover on, which you know originally happened before, it now puts the top cover on and the buttons don't move. Okay, because it had located these buttons first and this top cover isn't taking the buttons with it. So you have to kind of be, you know, vigilant. I'm gonna go in here um, into my button move, and I can just say add, and if I add the two buttons. Now, since um, it's putting these on to this first, I need to treat that like a subassembly when it sees this top cover move that attaches it. So now when I animate this, button, button, wheel, button, button, and the whole thing goes on. And it's exactly the same though. So, yeah, so we've had people ask us for this capability for a long time because you can see if I come up here into my feature list, I got a crazy large amount of features. So I can, you know, I can make subgroups if I knew what these features were, and I say feature group, add, and I pick some features. Okay, so now I put all those groups in a subgroup, or all those features in a subgroup. You could have, you know, locating features, measurement features. I'm not 100% sure, but that's, you know, that's the power of grouping is mainly so you can organize your model more efficiently and navigate through it faster.